Hello, this is Orshi and today's video is going to be in English because at the weekend we were at my husband's parents and we usually speak English there. So when I was thinking about this topic, I was thinking about it in English. And the other reason is that uh, I'm trying to keep a distance from this topic. This is going to be quite difficult because it's such a personal topic, but it's still easier in a foreign language than in my own language. My father died four weeks ago. He'd been in hospital for two months, so one could say it couldn't have been a surprise, but um, it really was because uh, for six weeks we didn't know what uh, his illness was and only for the last two weeks did we know that uh, he actually had cancer. The whole summer he was in and out of hospital. He was hospitalized with uh, respiratory problems and the immediate idea was that he had lung cancer but uh, they couldn't find anything in his lungs. So we were really happy that uh, it was going to be something else. Later they did find something somewhere else and it turned out to be cancer. But even then we were told that he was going to get some sort of treatment. He just had to get a bit stronger because he'd lost so much weight. And then one morning my mother called us on the telephone and told us that he died. So no one had told us in advance to prepare for something worse than a slow recovery. We were even joking about uh, that a slow recovery is so much better than a slow decline. In this video I'm trying to have a look at all the feelings that I've already had, all the stages of grief that I've experienced. The first was anger against the doctors because they hadn't told us about this. Anger against the world because my father was such a good person. He helped everybody. He really couldn't say no to anyone. He would lend money to friends and relatives. He would do all sorts of work like plumbing or electric works. My mother's colleagues would ask him to do small jobs like putting up a shelf on the wall or repairing their computer and he would always do these. Even when he didn't have enough time he would put his own things aside and he was a blood donor for decades. He had a strong personality and uh, he was often quite hard to be sitting next to or being in the same room with, but his intentions were always good. He cared about us deeply. Anger against my father because he'd been smoking for so long and uh, I'd taught him several times how I hated this bad habit and how he should stop immediately. And he had several health issues which could be deduced from the fact that he was a heavy smoker. And I was also angry because he didn't let me go and see him at the hospital because I have small children and he said uh, he didn't want us to contact something contagious. So I didn't see him for the last two months. Feeling the loss of safety. Children think that their parents are able to do anything and that nothing bad could happen to them. It's very hard to realize that your parents are actually just people and bad things can happen to them. And it's also hard to realize that uh, big and strong people like my father do actually die. So far, most people that uh, have died in my family were either quite old or had something serious going on in their lives. Like there have been suicides and there have been issues with alcohol, but nothing similar to this before. It's very difficult to see that uh, he'd been uh, worried about a lot of people and he'd felt sorry about a lot of people so much older than him and those people are still alive and he's not. I also have realized that uh, I might even die younger than him. I mean, I hope I won't, but his parents died at the age of 75 and 77 and he probably wasn't thinking that uh, he might die some 20 years younger. 
mourning the future, realizing all the things that uh, will never happen, realizing that he'll never be retired, his grandchildren will never remember him firsthand, how he was looking forward to becoming a grandfather and how great he was at it, and uh, how he liked carving wood and making things and uh, flying a kite and uh, playing the guitar, learning new things. Him playing the guitar and me singing. These were so great things that will never happen again. It's not just that uh, this will not happen this year or for a period of time, but uh, it will never happen. All these feelings came to me in the first two days and then I started to realize that uh, this is actually bearable and I used to think that uh, it would be just unbearable if my parents died and uh, realizing that it actually is bearable is quite painful because if this is bearable then losing my mother would be bearable as well or losing a child and if such painful things are in fact bearable then what is sacred in the world? What is sacred in the world if you can experience such big pain and still stand up and keep going. Then I realized that uh, this is good. You can't be beaten by pain. You have to feel it. You have to take your time. Then you can keep going. Thinking of the last time we visited my parents and the last couple of times we met, the last uh, telephone calls and thinking of the subjects we were talking about and then suddenly I realized that uh, not only my father's stories are lost, at least most of them, because we weren't really listening when he was telling them. Of course, we thought we were going to be hearing them for decades to come. But also my grandparents' stories are lost because my father was the last one to know them. And this is quite painful because uh, he had a lot of stories and good ones. Feeling silly for not realizing how seriously ill he really was. I mean, the doctors didn't tell us. I don't know whether they taught him or not. We will never know. But uh, somehow, maybe we should have known. We should have felt. But my father was so big and strong. He was 1.91 meters tall. He usually weighed 100 kilograms and he had a big beard and big gray hair. He really looked like Leonardo da Vinci from the 21st century. He didn't look like somebody that was going to die anytime soon. Not even when he had problems with breathing. We weren't used to the fact that uh, he was ill. Finding myself using his words and his expressions. I even find myself using his curse words, which <laughs> I normally didn't use. And uh, this is a way of trying to bring something back. I don't know how long this will last, but uh, this is a weird one. Trying to think of famous people who died younger. This is also weird, but uh, I have to except that uh, it's not only old people that die and that it can be a life well lived and fully lived even if I have a feeling that one third of his life has been stolen from him because he was a child and then he was a father and he has just started to be a grandfather and then it's over. So I have this silly weird feeling that something has been stolen from him. So I have to think of others that have died even younger. Because then I can say, well, my father had more than Lady Diana had, or more than Elvis had, or John Lennon had. I don't know exactly where this is coming from, but I'm quite sure that uh, others go through this stage as well, because you have to accept that your loved one is gone and that his life is actually over, but it was well lived and it was a good life. And even if he could have been a good grandfather, he was already a good grandfather, although he had less than two years of being a grandfather. It doesn't mean that something 
important was taken from him. It's just that this is as much as he could have. I have also talked with friends who have lost a father and one of my best friends lost her father a couple of years ago and uh, she said well at one point in your life you have to lose your parents and I've been thinking about this and realized you have to lose your parents if you're lucky because if you don't lose your parents it means that your parents lose you which is even worse not just because you die but losing a child can be such a big tragedy for a family whereas losing a parent is it's painful to say but it's kind of natural being worried about my mother i think she's doing okay and she's trying really hard she can be happy with children and grandchildren and she has already sort of built a strategy to survive but i'm still worried about her being left alone at home because she lives in a different town we can't be together all the time and i know she's going to be alone a lot and she has three years left until she retires so she'll have to live alone for at least three years i don't know what will happen after that wanting to have a good family and to do something good to the world i want to do something good something useful for the world or for the community around me i don't know why i don't know why this urge just now but i don't want to waste my time doing things that are not useful at all like we have just uh, moved in to our first own house a couple of months ago and we're in the middle of the whole renovation and um, when we are thinking about this tile or that tile this color for the wall or that color for the wall i find myself thinking i don't care it doesn't matter it makes no difference i'm a trained architect and i'm supposed to have a sense of style but i can't force myself thinking about style or beauty just useful stuff i don't know why this is because my father liked beauty he did a lot of woodwork he made a lot of shelves and small cupboards and picture frames and even the smallest things he always decorated but i still feel that i need to be somehow useful so that i can have a rest from this grief and i want to have a good family i know i can't bring my father back but i can do something about the future i can have nice happy and clever children and i can also be nice to the rest of our family that is left for us i would like to see them be happy and i know this grief is going to stay with us in a way as long as we are alive but i think we will manage